Good evening. This week, how quickly will a fire engine turn up when you call 999? And the extraordinary tale of the school teacher from Rotherham who found himself at the centre of the Russian Revolution. Hello, I'm Keely Donovan and this week we're in York. Coming up on the programme, when a fire starts and you call 999, you expect the quickest possible response. But what if it doesn't come? I think that Ian could have lost his life and Duncan on the rooftop doing something that the fire brigade should have done properly in the first place. Also tonight, the jockeys who starve themselves to try and make weight. There were some days there you'd be taking eight or ten pound off. It was, it was just crazy. And later in the programme, the strange tale of the Rotherham teacher who got mixed up in the Russian Revolution. Most of us don't spend very much time thinking about the fire brigade until, of course, the time comes when we have to dial 999. But tonight on Inside Out, we can reveal evidence that staff shortages and software problems at North Yorkshire Fire and Rescue Service could be putting lives at risk. Phil Connell reports. When fire breaks out, you call 999 and you expect the fire brigade to be with you in the shortest possible time. But what if there's a delay? Never certain. Indescribable. But what if only one out of three fire engines are available in an entire city? And I was sort of screaming, get in and, and do something. Tonight on Inside Out, we investigate the latest technology being used by North Yorkshire Fire and Rescue Service. Is it working as well as it should? And are cuts to frontline staff putting lives at risk? It does all point to that people aren't as safe as the ones who are in North Yorkshire. The May Day bank holiday in 2017 should have been a typical busy weekend in the seaside town of Whitby in North Yorkshire. But the good weather is not what the owners of the town's famous Magpie Cafe remember that weekend for. Alison McKenzie and Ian Robson own and run the Magpie. The fish and chip restaurant is a Whitby landmark. On the evening of April the 30th, fire broke out above the kitchen. This was a setback, but it wasn't the end of the world for you. No, it was upsetting, but it, it was not as bad as it could have been. But the very next day, things took a serious turn. Smouldering embers from the previous day's fire reignited. But this time, North Yorkshire's fire brigade's response was less effective. To some point in the afternoon, you'll know the exact time. Yeah, about, about half past two, somebody, somebody rang us and said, do you know your roof's on fire? The firefighters who did eventually attend put the fire out, but only after the magpie had suffered extensive damage. It took Ian and Alison seven months and a lot of money before they could reopen in December. The cost of actual rebuild is going to be roughly around the million pound mark, I think. Whitby Fire Station is under a mile away from the magpie, so it's hard to understand why there was such a delay. Well, Inside Out has learned that the main cause was a software failure at the fire services headquarters in North Allerton. Many of the UK's fire brigades use a system in their control rooms called Vision. It's supplied by Capita and is designed to help staff at HQ direct where to send resources in the event of a fire or other emergency. But on the day of the Magpie fire, the system froze causing a significant delay in the Whitby station being alerted. In fact, it was at least seven minutes before control room staff realised a fire engine hadn't even been mobilised. A manager who doesn't want to be identified says problems are common. She's recently resigned because of stress. That particular fault hadn't happened before, um, but there's been many, many faults. And, and it's something I've found particularly difficult, being able to get faults rectified in good time. The Magpie fault itself um, was one where there was multiple calls coming in and it looked on the system as though the resources had been mobilised to the instant, but they hadn't. They were almost, they were greyed out as though they'd been sent, but they hadn't been. And it took some time before that was actually noticed. But managers for the North Yorkshire Fire Brigade deny there are serious problems with vision. 
We had one incident where there was a, a notable delay, uh, which, as you know, it would be last year. Um, otherwise, there have been 6,000 emergency incidents a year, which we've responded to, um, you know, as we would expect to do so. So, apart from that one incident, it appears to be working. The Fire Brigade's union remains unconvinced. Had there been anybody trapped in the fire at the time, eight or nine minutes really is life or death. Capita, who make the vision software, told us it performs a vital function in supporting busy control rooms. They said there'd been a small number of isolated problems, the majority of which were swiftly dealt with. But Inside Out asked every fire brigade that uses vision what problems they'd experienced. Some brigades declined to answer our questions, but several of those that did respond, including North Yorkshire, confirmed that they have experienced faults with vision that affect mobilisation. But it's not just the vision software that's putting pressure on staff at North Yorkshire Fire Service. In recent years, the number of trained control room staff has been cut by a half. One guy was working nine shifts in a row, and when I flagged it up to my manager, I said, look, it's not appropriate, we shouldn't be doing this. If something goes wrong, and then blame will be apportioned, fingers will be pointed. And it's very unlikely that management is going to turn around and say, it's our fault, we should have staffed the control room more effectively. In July 2015, the brigade's chief fire officer announced plans to save one and a half million from its annual £30 million budget. Those cuts led to job losses in the service. The FBU thinks they've gone too far. It points to one August evening last summer as evidence. On that night, staff sickness in York meant only one of the city's three whole-time fire engines was operational. Two out of three stations had fewer crew than the legal minimum of four. And as fate would have it, a fire broke out at the Dawson family home in Tostig Avenue on the west side of York. Two teenage girls were in the house. Jane Dawson was half a mile away when she got a desperate call from one of them, her daughter Summer. I could tell by the panic in her voice that something was not right. By the time Jane got back to her house, it was well alight. The girls who'd been inside when fire broke out had escaped, but both had to be kept in hospital overnight because of the effects of breathing in smoke. But there was still another problem. Everybody was out, but there was still no sign of a fire engine. So what was that like, Jane? You're here watching your house going up in, in flames and, and nobody here to help? Absolutely horrendous. To her astonishment, even after the first appliance arrived, there was a further wait. To put out the fire, additional fire engines were needed, and staff shortages in York meant they were delayed. I was sort of screaming, get in and, and do something. Um, and, and, and they couldn't, you know, and just having to stand back and watch. And then you're expecting, you know, the fire brigade to get on with the job, and their hands were tied. So two of the fire stations had a cruise that was short. Um, one of them was able to use part-time on-call staff. But a delay in getting to the fire again. But the delay was absolutely minimal. For the first time in my knowledge, we had a situation in York where we've got three whole time fire engines, where two of them fire engines were insufficiently crewed to be immediately available. We all pay our council tax and things like that for the fire service. And you know, you expect when the, the, there is a tragedy going on that they are there and they are able to carry out their job. Here in Whitby, the Magpie is again open for business. Inside Out has been leaked these documents relating to the fire. They describe how control room staff were too busy taking calls from the public to notice that a fire engine hadn't even been mobilised. This is the internal incident debrief document that shows what went wrong that day. What do you make of this? You, you don't like to point the finger of blame, but... When you see in black and white that mistakes have been made. And we've suffered because and of we've that. we've suffered for it. And our staff have suffered. Yes. So does this make you angry? Does it make you It concerned? makes me very angry. It makes me extremely angry and upset. Um, because we, never, we haven't received an apology from the fire brigade. But then that would be admitting the made errors. And as regards the Magpie Cafe, will the service be offering them any compensation for what happened? Well, that isn't really something I can comment on at the moment. All I can say is repeat that 
the, there isn't any evidence that the delay caused uh, any particular um, worse outcome in that fire. When you can no longer turn fire engines out in the time that you are expected to, then that is the primary purpose of our business. If you can't do that, or you're struggling to do that, if that isn't a crisis, then I don't know what is. It's just by the skin and the teeth, really, that there hasn't been a large incident now when there's only been one or two staff on duty. The financial and the emotional impact, what's that been like? I think that Ian could have lost his life and Duncan on the rooftop doing something that the fire brigade should have done properly in the first place. I feel very passionately. If you've got a story you'd like to tell us about